beam magnetism group at Argonne. So, um, there, and there's a lot of other materials uh, that we're looking at, at uh, making along with that. Uh, so niobium, uh, aluminum is actually a, a superconductor if you get it cold enough. Um, there's a lot of other, you know, type one, type two. We're looking at, uh, also into taking and making more uh, compounds and alloys, um, but uh, you know, some of this will, it's not my direct expertise, so I'll make a few materials, send them to people and, and have them test them. Any interest from the biomedical industry and things like uh, just dreaming a pancreas cell having a microelectrode that being stimulated on or off through sensing? Um, I would I would think that uh, they might have interest in that. Uh, one of yeah one of one of the things that we're going to be looking at specifically this summer is taking these individual wires and using them as a catalyst bed to grow diamond on. One of the neat things about diamond is you can put it anywhere within the human body, and after that initial trauma of of, of going through. You know, the cells that are right next to there more or less look across and they go, did something just happen? You know, it's almost like they see their own reflection. There's no rejection uh, to diamond. So, yeah, that's uh, something that's going to be very interesting. So. You said something about grams and grown grams before? Um, haven't, haven't, but uh, using using the instrument that we're building here, and based upon the pattern that we have, we should be able to take and make a gram in about three hours. So what, what effect is that? It was, so your first um, Well, it, it opens up a, a whole new realm of possibilities. So nobody's ever, ever used a gram of pattern nanowires before because they haven't existed. Nobody ever used a transistor but yet, today, you own a cell phone? No. <laughs> I picked the one person that didn't have a cell phone. Um, the fact that I have a computer here and you're watching it, you're using transistors. Um, it, it really is a transfer, transformational technology. So you have to massively increase the size to use an existing product? Um, well, I mean, there's, there's a couple of different ways of, of, of using these. So, you know, one is to use individual, uh, you know, in the form of, of tags and, and uh, uh, but the other one is to take and, and use them uh, as reinforcements. So, ju uh, the, the, the most familiar example that you can probably think of is fiberglass. Fiberglass, you know, that they make Corvette bodies out of. Um, you have individual fibers that really don't have, you know, they have a lot of strength to, to an individual fiber, but they don't really have anything, uh, you know, to build up. So essentially if you uh, take and, and comprise a smart material, and that's what fiberglass uh, is, um, you get properties that neither the plastic nor the, the glass fibers have to begin with. So. skyscraper into a billboard on the outside of the whole skyscraper. You could make it like a television. And they also had a, another thing about your home. You could uh, make it any color you wanted. You could make it into a, a television. You could make it into a red wall. You could make it into a black wall just by touching it. You know, it's different, you know, different, different new abilities give us different tools to, to attack a lot of, of new problems, some, some of those problems are, are, or some of those solutions are better than others, but uh, yeah. Is that so. because of the properties of the nanowires or electrical properties that you're building in? Yeah, and I, I, since I didn't see that particular thing, I, I really can't comment on that. Uh, I could. Well, I'll, I'll expand it a little bit. If you had a solar cell, would they be uh, built of nanowires, would they be So, so there's, so there's a, a design that I've got a patent application on that essentially uses all of the high energy 
of radiation uh, coming through. So your ultraviolet through, say, about green. Uh, below that, um, traditional solar cells really don't derive a lot of, of, of energy. Um, yet, uh, when you put a solar cell in a house, you have to make a choice between solar thermal, uh, which is heating water, which there it's all the, the infrared, you know, red up to about the green. Um, so essentially they use different parts of the spectrum. So what I'm looking at is taking and making a solar cell that's thin enough, you can place it over the top of the other solar cell, uh, the other solar thermal panel. If there are other additional questions, please see Mike after the uh, lecture. I want to thank Mike for uh, his uh, very interesting lecture and invite you to the last lecture of the season uh, in May. Thank you very much.